Okie doke. And here we go. All right, so you know the headliner of everything that we've been doing over the last couple of years, you know, that really ties into the play span, playing longer, doing the things you love to do, is that as most of your top nutrition scientists in the world today think, sports nutrition is the new healthy aging. So what we do for athletes really crosses over to the general population. Obviously not to the same degree we work with athletes, but it's the same type of nutrition that they would need to be able to do things they want to do for as long as they possibly can. Because no one you work with, no one in your family, no one in your, none of your clients, there's really no one that doesn't, that ever wants to stop doing what they love to do. So there's really no different. We have to treat each other all the same way from a nutrition standpoint in order to be able to not just grow strong in the beginning of life, stay strong throughout life, and then be able to play longer, do the things we love to do. So sports nutrition, new healthy aging, you're going to see that across every single lecture I do over the next you know few years for sure. All right, so let's get into Amino Boost. So quickly, a safe, effective recovery formula and the bonus, extreme low calorie deliver of a maximal muscle protein signal for anyone when it gets right down to it. But I'm going to show you how it ties all together with whatever you, whoever you're working with at the very end. So we'll just go over the facts of Amino Boost. You know, we'll do some real history, muscle protein synthesis, why is that important to us, and then we'll get into the Amino Boost facts. And then we'll use it, I'll show you what it looks like within different programs to maximize muscle protein synthesis. And you, as you all know, everything that we have is all taken from the Practitioner's Dietary Supplement Reference Guide, which is up on the website under Learn. So the complete document, all 20 pages, including the hundreds of re references that support the, doc, the, the product and the ingredients and dosing and so forth, there's, is all resides up there. So I just cut out the pieces that are important right now. And let's just spend the next 40 minutes talking about it, and then we'll do the last part of it, you know, for you guys to ask all the questions that you ever wanted to about this, especially how it works in the programs, even though I'll cover a little of that at the end. Okay, here's what I want you to walk away with, so I'm going to start with it. <laughs> amino boost. The profile of the ingredients in this, the essential amino acids, mimics the amino acid, the amino acid release from muscle during exercise. So the things that are coming out during exercise as you damage your tissue come out in a certain proportion, and this mimics those. It also mimics the needs of muscle protein synthesis. These are the triggers. These amino acids on inside this container are the maximum triggers of muscle protein synthesis. And they're in direct proportion to recovery requirements or the deposition or the amino acids that are added to muscle tissue after a workout. So again, this discovery was started with Tipton, Volhe, and Bohe, uh, Volpe and Bohe, back in the uh, late 1999 and then 2003, 2005. And I was just fortunate enough to kind of be the one that was asked to write a, 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 post, a postgraduate document on amino acids and sports by CRC Press. And during that process, going through all of these incredible research around amino acids, including how they use it with astronauts to maintain muscle when, of course, you, it's almost impossible to maintain muscle in space. Um, that the, the use of it constantly was just it was amazing what it can actually do and what are the actual triggers. And hence, in 2005, when I was still with Apex, I created the Amino Boost formula. And now, it's, of course, we've been upgraded it to all the new science over the years, and especially with the we've learned more about just leucine itself. So, it is now the perfect sort of muscle protein synthesis magnifier, if you will. One, for one, for one target group, which is the athletes that may I may personally work with around the world, so you're professional athletes and even college athletes, speed recovery and maximize muscle protein synthesis, synthesis for the competitive athlete. For them, it's about playing as long as they can, trust me, because they're making millions and millions of dollars a year. So what, it, what we're trying to do with them is take dietary and pre-post protein to the next level by integrating this into their entire program. So they're still getting doing their pre-post shakes, but they're also integrating this to keep that signal louder, louder all day and control it. So there's a constant muscle protein synthesis signal by using this. And for anyone, it really can be a sole extreme low calorie protein supplement during weight loss. And I'll show you how to tie that in. And a low calorie supplement protein source for anyone is needed. I'll show you how I tie that in for actually for myself. And then anyone over 50, so whether you work out or not. This is a high protein, low calorie, which is important to many people, as you know, 
nitrogen and low, very low nitrogen load, obviously we've eliminated 11 of the, of the amino acids in it, and low sulfur producing, which is also important to bone health, muscle protein synthesis to stave off the inevitable. Anyone, especially the aging population. Okay, so the big question is, why do we care about muscle protein synthesis beyond the athlete? So let me just take you back. Muscle protein synthesis, 101, little refresher course for everybody. Again, no one wants to stop doing the things they love to do. They want to keep going. So that's why muscle protein synthesis is important to everyone because if it becomes less than breakdown, you've got a real problem because breakdown is higher than your synthesis is lower. You're just going to shrink, atrophy, gets not just smaller and weaker, you're going to break. And of course, that happens to everybody at some point in their life. They can't, obviously, no one dies at age 90 looking like, or 95 or 100 looking like Mr. Universe or Miss Universe. So at some point it happens to us all. The goal for everyone, though, is to keep synthesis ahead or at least equal to breakdown as long as possible. All right, so you've all seen this before in my lectures, you know, how muscle mass is maintained in a healthy, normal fed human right here. And this is with no exercise, of course. So this would just be a normal person here. Muscle, and don't forget, it's about every four hour that wave goes, and that's what started all the protein every four hours for athletes and so forth. But interesting, you got to remember this now. It stays negative until protein is ingested. And then if you don't ingest protein, your nitrogen balance is going to stay negative because now you've got to tear down your own tissues to repair the muscle. And 1% to 2% of all, all protein is replaced daily. So within 50 days, you have all new protein. Of course, it starts over again. It keeps going over again. So that's happening daily in all parts of the body. So muscle protein synthesis is positive, which is what we're looking for, through puberty. And that's how you grow. So obviously, you're retaining more nitrogen, okay, which is from the protein molecules. You're retaining it into the – and we now know that you are growing and you're getting – muscles are getting bigger, bones getting stronger. All of you are growing. That's through puberty. So that could be 14, 15 for a female, could be 16, 17. You can still grow a little bit after puberty, but the point is muscle protein synthesis is designed to be that way ahead of muscle protein balance during that time. Then, through normal daily activity and nutrition, mass is maintained up to about age 30. Now, again, if you have a totally sedentary job starting at age 18, trust me, you're not going to maintain the same mass. You're going to be sitting down, you're going to lose mass, or if you get fat, you could, be, you could actually get heavier, okay, and that would help support the muscle, believe it or not. So that's one okay thing about getting fat. You'll get more muscle, but, of course, that's not it's, it, the trade-off isn't worth it. But that's why I always tell you, that's why the body is designed after but late 20s, early 30s, you start losing muscle. And, then, and that's just the way the body is designed because humans were not supposed to live past their late 30s. Maybe early 30s, most, most humans would die, obviously, our, our ancient ancestors. But now, so we, we had to figure. So now that we can live longer, we're figuring out how to keep synthesis ahead of protein from uh, synthesis ahead of breakdown for a much longer time. So the addition of exercise comes in. So let's look at when you add exercise and protein. Okay. Now I say protein. I'm speaking of dietary protein. When I say intact, that's dietary protein or a protein supplement like you know a whey that's complete protein, all 20 amino acids that you need for building muscle or uh, a casein or a soy or a plant protein that has all 20 amino acids. So that's, we call that intact protein because it's all there. All right, so from the previous slide, that's A, energy balance. You're in energy balance, no exercise, you're, 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 you're going, uh, you're right after puberty and for the next 10 years, you're, you're fine. Now, adding exercise, as you can look, the breakdown is the white space. Breakdown is much greater, of course, because that's, that's a trigger to build more muscle and the synthesis is greater. And we end up with a slight net up to a certain point. You can't build muscle forever. No one, can, you know, no one can start building muscle at 18 and keep working out. And when they're 99, still keep building muscle. It's not going to happen. So up to a point, you know, you're not going to get, you're not going to continue building muscle. But there it is for a certain period of time, obviously. Now, when you add now C, which is the pre-post window, we all know this. This is something that Ivy and researchers back in the early 2000s and late uh, 90s uh, found this, this metabolic window that during exercise, synthesis is now being triggered because you're doing, you're damaging tissue, right? And when amino acids converge during that period, very close to exercise or even within exercise, 
you get a spike in muscle protein synthesis, or what we call the fractional synthesis rate. It's a tremendous one, and you're seeing the window here. So at zero, as at the very end of exercise, you can look at synthesis levels are way high. So now when, they can, when amino acids converge on that window, your muscle protein synthesis in that window will be the greatest all day long. When the window closes and you don't get it in there, you know you missed that window and you don't make it up. And Crib uh, et al. back in 2005 proved that very neatly. You do not make that up. And so anytime there is an opportunity, you, we may not make it up. That doesn't mean you're not going to get gains because there's other times in the day that you have protein synthesis, but this is a window you never want to miss. So you can see the difference on the left on, on the C. Greater synthesis, less breakdown, higher net when you add protein into that metabolic window. And this is still using uh, intact proteins, of course. So we're, or you could use essential amino acids like we were talking about with amino boosts. But just getting you know, this is actually, this study here is from uh, De Debris et al. and Ivy down here. So I'm, I'm just, you, they use regular intact protein on this. Now, if you take a look at caloric restriction or aging, obviously this is what we were talking about earlier. Your breakdown is always going to be pretty much greater than your synthesis. But high protein can offset that loss, obviously, as we've learned with weight loss. Obviously, a high protein diet is better. And substituting amino acids, we can actually build muscle during weight loss, which is very, very difficult to do. Okay. And you all know the lifetime solution from my placeman lectures I've been doing around the world for the last year and a half now. So protein at one gram per pound divided four to five times a day. And if you're exercising, hit that window. Just get part of your protein then. Why not? Get it right before the workout and right after the workout and that fast acting protein. And now you've got the window covered and you've got really as much since this going on as long with regular intact protein. So I put this little slide together for you. And all I care about is that everybody looks at it when I'm done and goes, wow, that's cool. Nothing more than that. It took me a long time to put it together. <laughs> just, this just tells you what I just showed you. Muscle protein synthesis and how amino acids affect muscle protein synthesis. This is how you work. This is what your tissue looks like after you work out. So whether you're a runner, whether you're a weightlifter, you're, you've done structural damage to your tissues. This is a clear, very clear picture. That's a blown up one, the one below it, of what your tissues look like. Just a regular workout. And even your clients, to a certain extent, looks like this. When you add amino acids now, they come in. They trigger off to the left muscle protein synthesis, and they begin to heal the tissue. Depending on your workout, if you are a weightlifter or a powerlifter and you work out to get stronger, the goal is your tissue gets bigger. Now, but the bottom line is it has to heal. If it doesn't heal, it continues not to heal throughout before your next bouts of exercise. Next thing you know, you have an injury. So, again, the goal is full repair, and the amino acids are what get that done for you at the end of the day. And then, of course, at the end of the day, for everybody, 100% healed, bigger, stronger, if that's what your goal was with your training, or at a very minimum, slow, normal losses from aging and inactivity. So that's how amino acids and exercise work together, and that's what it looks like. Okay, so what's the next level? So let's start talking about what is the next level of muscle protein synthesis? Well, it's the type of protein, obviously. Now that we know essential amino acids are the only amino acids responsible. They're the only ones that are necessary for muscle protein synthesis. So we, once, once they discovered that, everything was about, okay, what are the amounts of these essential amino acids that would maximize every target of muscle protein synthesis within the muscle? Well, of course, leucine has now been elucidated as probably the greatest muscle protein signal amplifier. Well, what about the other essential amino acids that's there? Because they're the other ones that are responsible for muscle protein synthesis. So now we extract that. So obviously, if you're going to look at a type of protein, you want the one with the highest essential amino acids. And you want the one with the highest leucine per gram. And you also want, based on our metabolic window, the one with the fastest transit time into the blood. So this is very neatly done here. And this is all from uh, Derivis, uh, Debris, and uh, et al., uh, this is, it takes all of your, you know, your whey, casein, your, your popular protein supplements here, um, and shows you what 25 grams of protein looks like from a breakdown of the things that are needed for protein synthesis. And as you can see, whey is far superior. And whey also has the highest leucine, which is, again, what we call the leucine threshold, which most guys, Churchwood and some of the other great researchers, discovered that that Probably at 2.5 grams is the cutoff where 
When you get above that, you're finding greater benefit from the amino acids that are coming in. So it could be anywhere from three to five to six grams of leucine. You continue to see benefits in muscle protein synthesis rates throughout the day, especially for exercisers or the aging population. Okay. Transit time on the right there, as you see. Essential amino acids into circulation. Now, as we know, this may not be important if you're you just you know you're if you're again working out or you're not working out, but throughout the day you're just as long as you're getting your protein every few hours. How important is this? The only time this is really important, you could argue a little bit more, but uh, would be the pre-post window. And look at whey. The transit time at whey is, is 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 dramatic, and so that means you're getting more essential amino acids, which are the triggers for muscle protein synthesis and the trigger to decrease breakdown, don't forget, is the whey protein. So here now you're getting it in very quickly within 30 minutes in your system. That's why we tell you to take your pre-post shake 30 minutes before your workout. Now you've got the essential amino acids pretty much ready to go, but you've also got all the other aminos. So at some point we like, so that's where the stack comes in. But this shows you how whey is superior in the transit time compared to casein and soy and the rest of it. All right, so what's the final level? Singling out the actual drivers, and this is how I, you know, when I, when I wrote the article, this is how this all came to pass back in the day. Drivers of muscle protein synthesis and their respective rate limiting amounts. That's the final level of muscle protein synthesis and more, which we'll see. And that, of course, is at this point in time. I'm just hoping in the next three or four years we'll discover something else that will even take muscle protein synthesis to the next level for old guys like me. And, of course, the athletes we work with, I want to too. All right, so amino boost, here we go. Goal, this is right from your PDSRG. I don't really need to read it to you, but you kind of get it. It is that specific amino acid blend, and of course we're talking about essentials now. For the, This is one group, this is one goal. For the athletic exercising population that's shown in clinical trials to maximize recovery from continuous training bouts and enhance muscle protein synthesis through unique pathways. So beyond intact protein in a fast acting, so even faster than what you saw with whey, Low calorie delivery to maintain training gains. In other words, it would be additive to the protein we've been talking about. This is obviously not important for your regular customer, which we'll look at in the whole thing. So fully recover and avoid inevitable plateaus for that competitive athlete because they want to compete forever. Trust me. Keep the muscle protein synthesis going all day, every day, to minimize the breakdown and maximize synthesis. All right, now, for the non-exercising adult population, I hinted a little earlier about this. You got a low calorie and a low nitrogen. This can be very important to non-exercisers. Keep the nitrogen level low. Keep the sulfur-producing aminos. There's only one amino acid in this entire formula that produces sulfur, and that is methionine. And that's why you see it at the very lowest. The other essential amino acids are not sulfur-producing, so there's no bone harm, none of those things that you have to worry about. And that's the only reason everybody had worried about, about protein and bone health, in the old days, that's kind of passe now, but in the old days it would because of the sulfur production and they'd have to leach, you know, uh, the, it'd have to leach calcium from the bone to buffer the, the blood because of the acid from amino acids. But we know that's not true in an active population. But the bottom line is you've also got a low sulfur producing supplement here as well to improve the otherwise declining normal net muscle balance that you see obviously much faster in the non-exercising population. So the goal here, obviously, for this group, potentially slow muscle loss related to aspects, and, and, and related aspects, such as balance, bone, strength, and injury. In a very low, certainly relatively low to protein, uh, calorie, nitrogen, sulfur load. Okay, so what's the rationale? Well, we already pretty much covered that. Exercise on amino acids stimulates skeletal muscle protein turnover independently. Thus combined, they have, needless to say, an additive effect on training and recovery. And this is the big one, although non-essential amino acids are necessary components of complete muscle. In other words, you need all 20 to make sure you can build muscle, but we can find them other places. We can get them from other foods that we can make them from. We can make them from essential amino acids and everything else. So we do need them, and we do want to supply full protein in there. But to keep the muscle protein synthesis going alive, all we really need on top of anything of those things is essential amino acids, and we can really target the maximum trigger with those. So, I just, all I did was cut out a little piece here for you. I'll put it in a diagram on the next slide. 
But essential amino acid feeding stimulate muscle protein synthesis independently of other mechanisms and can be incremental to protein alone. And these studies are all, I, I listed the, some of the studies here, but you've got them all in the PDSRG. Especially high in leucine, essential amino acids signal. I just put a couple of them down here for M, And the mTOR, you know, the, 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 that receptor site, that area right there, that is where every, all the signals are coming in and they're kind of going through some other places getting there. But that's where exercise hits it. But it hits a different part of it and it activates other receptors after that. And amino acids hit it. And a certain level of amino acids hit it differently and hit all kinds sort of different things. So that, that target of rapamycin is really the area that we're trying to get to with all of these things. And we can, if we isolate the actual arrow that's going to that target, that's what the goal is with all this. And then the other one, the mitogen activated protein kinase cascades are the other side of it, you know, help slow down breakdown. Well, and then we can upregulate the amino acid transporter expression, get, and so now we can really affect muscle protein synthesis specifically without all the other stuff. I put a, on all this is here is a, just a little picture of how that works. There's your, during your workout, when you contract, you can see the things that actually are conducive to synthesis, which is your green side. These are regulators of mTOR to upregulate synthesis. And then you've got on the other side, they're trying to downregulate it for muscle protein breakdown as you're working out. We want to minimize that breakdown. So that's real important. So if you take a look at the bottom here, essential amino acids can maximize the target signaling beyond intact protein in part because there's less splanchnic extraction. And what I mean by that, the liver. The liver gets first crack at everything, unfortunately. When you ingest anything, that's why when we shoot you up with something, it goes, it, it, it misses the liver. The first pass of the liver, anyway, okay? But it'll get there the second time, but it will get miss, miss the first pass, and we can get much more to the, in, into the uh, tissues that we're looking for. But of course, we're not going to be doing that here. So the, anytime you take anything orally, it goes through the portal blood into the liver, and the liver decides to keep the things it wants to keep or send it somewhere else. We're doing a, and essential amino acids can bypass a lot of that. There's less ex, extraction, but when it comes in an incomplete protein, then you've got to deal with the, the extraction from that and losing some of the essential amino acids right there during that time. And the other thing is we can maintain that ideal ratio of what we call hyper amino acidemia. In other words, all the amino acids in the blood that are being released during exercise, being absorbed during exercise. All of those things, we keep a high level, we have a more influx going into the muscle regularly to help these signals go. So that's how we can just, by just pulling out those pieces, and this just gives you a little diagram. And you get, this diagram is pretty much the same thing. There's the formula on the right. And I put all the basic, these are all for all you science heads that aren't gonna read the whole PDSRG piece, which you should, but, and which you're, you will if you are a science head. I just pulled out the actual, these are the essential amino acids, basic mechanisms of action really beyond intact protein. These are the ones that have been elucidated, and all the studies are right next to it. But here's the one I wanted to stop at. And for those of you that have used Amino Boost as a protein supplement in the middle of the day, so in other words, not necessarily around your workout or you didn't just eat an hour ago, really, like I will at 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 3.30 in the afternoon, I will use it to keep my muscle protein synthesis signal going all of a sudden I realized you just cut my appetite for the next few hours. So I mean, elucidating what that was, essential amino acids, now this is just them, depend, uh, dependence, and signaling controls the production of leptin by adipocytes, and that's huge. So your fat cells, production of leptin, which contributes to the regulation of appetite. You'll find it'll shut down your appetite during that. Um, and as Kat knows, and of course she's, she's on this, and we work with, with Tom Cruise, he, uh, we had to really get him down very, very quickly for that group of movies he had to do recently. And uh, he just was so locked into using this formula because it would cut his appetite as we had to get his diet, we had to get his weight, his body fat way down last year for a whole bunch of scenes he had to do. So again, this is something here that really helps with control. So you have a great, fantastic situation controlling appetite and keeping a muscle protein synthesis alive without the food at that particular juncture of the day. All right, and then of course this just gives you some more of the things we talked about on the previous slide. I just want to put all of the mechanisms of action listed here. They're boring, I know they are, but just to show you these are independent or incremental to intact protein. So now, as you can see, as I'm writing this giant thesis, uh, you're going through my head going, okay, wow, we can just keep this light on for athletes. We can do this for you know these people and we can really recover and take their whole training and recovery to the next level by adding this to our already pre-post stuff. 
by keeping the light on all day for muscle protein synthesis. And of course, that's the athletic world. And then for the Asian population, just like myself, who's an old exerciser, I'll show you some of the ways of incorporating it. So let's just summarize what we just looked at here, the difference from intact protein or your dietary protein. Essential amino acids stimulate muscle protein synthesis independently or at least incrementally from or to all other mechanisms. So it's, we're saying it's additive to intact protein. And essential amino acids in the right proportion can hit the bullseye on each target. Rather than throwing all the protein at it, it's got to get rid of this, get rid of this. It's, trans, it's fighting for you know, different transporters and so forth. So you don't get the same ratio hitting those targets. You can't get to that rate limiting amount. And just, I put a number in here for you. If you look at all the studies right now, about 40 grams of, of regular protein, so whey, by the way, is equal to about 12 grams of the essential amino acids. Now, again, this is a guess based on studies. We see 12 grams affect protein synthesis over a day. And again, this is just one portion of the day, uh, equal to 40 grams of whey. And that's without a high trigger of leucine. So I'm just, I, I just like this number because it makes sense because I think it's actually higher. I think it's, I think it's actually maybe 8 grams, 40 grams might be equal to 8 grams, but I like this number because it covers all bets this way. But the problem with 40 grams versus 12, so why don't you just get 40 grams? Well, forget the calorie part because some people don't really care. A lot of athletes don't care. But you don't get the percentages of the essential amino acids that are matched to targets, especially leucine. You can't do that from the intact protein. So that's why we take it all out, find out what we need, and we add it. Okay, now, the other thing is we get it fat more and faster in the muscles. You saw well, how fast whey protein gets there. Well, this gets there about twice as fast as that because we've extracted all those things out. So there's less splanchnic extraction we talked about. So there's more available to the affected tissues immediately. Less competition for transporters because when all of the amino acids are coming in, they're competing for all the transporters. Essentials just go right to theirs. And then there's greater expression of their transporters as well. So we're really getting the stuff. We're getting the arrows to the bullseye much, much faster, quicker, and more effectively. And then we just saw this one earlier, increasing the production of leptin by the adipocytes. Bottom line. Intact protein alone may not maximize all targets, as we just said. In other words, in other words, hit the rate-limiting aspect of each muscle protein synthesis mechanism, whether it be mTOR or RAGB, and targets of inhibition, which of course is you know AMPK, uh, which is that's which makes helps muscle break down faster. So we want to hit those and 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 really stop that at the same time. With intact protein, can't do it as nearly as as, as effective as essential amino acids. So the goal of these formulas of amino acids here is to maximize muscle protein synthesis during each temporal opportunity. Now I want to explain that to you. You saw the four hour waves. Well of course exercise adds to that because who knows where that's going to fall in. So now you've got temporal just be timing. Timing around the day. Every different parts of the day. And we don't know when you're synthesizing protein. We know before and after exercise when you're going to break it down before exercise, during exercise I mean, and then of course you're going to have that big window after, but after that, who knows? So by adding this to everything, we're really hitting every single window. Every opportunity is being hit. Exercise reduced or not. In other words, I, I have every one of our pro athletes, right before they go to bed, take, a, take a one dose of amino boost because we know you're going to build protein overnight at the same time. By utilizing every available mechanism of action up to its respective rate-limiting effect. So however... This particular target for muscle protein synthesis, the most amount, in other words, if you take in more, it's not going to do any good. And I, I would argue by doing the things we do, you're probably getting above that, but that's okay because you're maximizing. But you, won't, you, won't, you can't maximize it otherwise. The secondary goal is to deliver maximum protein synthesis throughout life with that low calorie, low nitrogen containing, which would be very important to the older population when it comes to kidney and liver and so forth. Of course, it doesn't affect an, an active person, and there's no... You know, we never have to worry about kidney damage with high protein intake. That's an old school thought also. And if we all that safety stuff is in your PDSRG, you have to worry about it. But as you get older, you're now you're really old, you know, those things can be a, can make a difference since we really want to get as much protein as possible with, the, with, the, with less calories, of course, and less sulfur producing supplement. And all those studies are all listed on two to five. I actually isolated them and actually wrote, you know, you know the outcomes of, of, of those. So there's quite a bit of work in there. To look at. All right, so let's just come to the punchline now. Let's get right down to the, the punchline of all this so you guys can get into some questions too. All right, what's the purpose? 
deliver a specialized leucine-enriched essential amino acid formula that can enhance muscle protein synthesis throughout the day, especially when combined with exercise. Now look, look at the asterisk. I want to make sure you see that. Down here, not necessary for typical exercise or meeting daily energy and protein requirements until age may be a factor, okay? When age could be a factor where now it is important for an older exerciser, and I'll show you how I use it. But bottom line is, for the this is to, very important for someone that, is, that may be competing or just wants to continue to make progress physically forever and as much as possible. So that's the first one. All exercisers and athletes seeking continuous physical pro progress, ideal for breaking through or avoiding fitness plateaus. When we first launched this back in 2005, 2006, into the NBA, because you know I, I owned NASM and oh, we were uh, the, we were we were the, uh, the, the the all of the strength conditioning coach had to be certified by us in order to work in the NBA at that particular point. So we were getting all of our players this. We flipped them from branch chain to this, including their pre post protein though they still had that to this. The difference was night and day because basketball is one of the hardest. And Cat will tell you that since her son plays uh, major division one basketball right now. Uh, that's the hardest one to heal from when you're on the court that long. Where football, of course, you're on and off constantly, and you're not playing the whole game. But these, these uh, players in basketball are pretty much playing the whole game, and it's about how long they can go up and down the court and get the rest in between. Well, amino boost just changed their world for them, being able to recover fast enough to be able to get more minutes in a game, which was huge. Extremely low calorie, so another typical – extremely low calorie and high anabolic – pre-post-workout supplement for athletes trying to maximize protein synthesis during restricted calorie dieting to help maintain muscle protein synthesis. So physique competitors, fighters, in fact, my son Zane, uh, he just just got a little plug for him. He just, I dropped him off at the airport for Abu Dhabi, which is like the, the biggest fight you know, in, in the world, like second to the world. So he just won the bronze at, uh, I think I told you on the last webcast, he won the bronze at the Pan Ams. And he, he won the whole thing up there, so he's coming home Sunday to a big party. So these, and all, we get all the fighters, as you go look at our Top Fit Champions page, you'll see all these top black belts all over. They all use Amino Boost to get their weight down. Because they're using that, we're actually using that as the sole pre-post to get that muscle protein signal without and being able to cut the calories. So for competitors like that, weight competitors, it's very important. Uh, especially important for older athletes seeking physical improvements as the body becomes more resistant to anabolic effects of food and exercise, which unfortunately that's what happens to all of us. Things just don't work so well anymore, and that's because we're not supposed to be here. And we figured out how to cheat death, and we're still here. And we're figuring out how to be here a long time and keep doing the things we like. So this is really important for that older athlete. And then ideal. This is now for all of you out here where you're uh, you know, track athletes, the ones that have multiple training sessions a day or they have tournament play before and after each event. So basketball players, when they're doing tournaments and so forth, uh, this is a great way to sip it like Gatorade through the day, right after a tournament play, take that down, you can help start the recovery process, minimize the breakdown, and move on to the next event. So very important for that area as well. And then, of course, as I mentioned, all non-exercisers over 30 to help stave off age-related loss of muscle. And then the low calorie, low nitrogen, and low sulfur producing protein supplements. So this is typical. This is the typical use and purpose. Now everybody asks me about ages, so I'm putting it in here now. Uh, ages 16 to 17, highly competitive athletes only. And the reason we don't give it to people younger, you can't hurt them. You any of those kind of things. We just don't because you don't do studies on that population. Number one, number, and it's not going to hurt them or anything. But yeah, you know, they're they're doing fine on their own. They're still going through puberty. They're doing fine with just their pre post their first string, their multivitamin and fish oil. That's all I give anybody up to age 18, and calcium is needed, of course. Unless they are highly competitive, then they'll, they will add amino boost for 16 and 17. And we always talk to the parents at the same time and tell them that. And by the way, I've had many of you have parents call me, and you can always do that. Most people know how my kids grew up, you know, having one in the NFL and another one in Elite Fighter. It kind of, you know, shows that. You know, these kids did all the right things as they got up there to that, that top place. That didn't make them win, obviously, but it gave them structural integrity to be able to do the things they wanted to do. Okay, so for every adult at some point in their life, Amino Boost fits in. Unique features, don't need to, you already know this. Uh, the formula uses a very leucine enriched essential amino acid blend, right? It's been shown in clinical trials to work. It's designed to increase the availability of amino acid in proportion of the requirement for maximizing the signal but also muscle deposition. So that's what's going to end up being in muscle as well. 
portion of it. Extremely high anabolic formula with low calorie, relatively low nitrogen compared to protein for sure, and sulfur producing supplement for, and it's, and it's palatable. As you know, it's very drinkable. And that's why I have people drink it, start it 10 minutes before the workout and drink it throughout the workout. And you can use with any program, which we'll show in a minute, this unique formula can provide incremental effect to muscle protein gains. And I would argue for a lot of your clients, you don't need that, for most of them probably, but it's very important to someone that wants to keep going. Thus additive to all protocols, including the pre post protein and carbohydrate feeding. And it can be used as the muscle stack, which I'll show you in just a little bit. And I would easily argue there is no competitor out there with this anywhere. And I know most of you know that. And by the way, Amino Boost is the number one selling product we have above multivitamins, which is embarrassing. Because <laughs> obviously the multivitamin, we always tell people that's the first and most important. As long as you're getting your protein, I can stave off that loss, you know, as long as you're getting that. But the Amino Boost has become our number one product because it does work and people feel it. So dosing-wise, I just put it in here. It's on the bottle, but still... If you're less than 150 pounds, one scoop before and repeat it immediately after. If you're over, here's the math for you science heads out there that want to know the math. And it took me a while to figure all this out from all the studies. But if you're greater than 150, you add 5% for every for every 5% above that, you add six six tenths of a gram for every 10 pounds of weight. I'm sorry, add 5%. So, if example, I did the example here for you. If you're 200 pounds, you would add three grams. That'd be a 15 gram dose. And aging would do the same kind of incremental amount, so I'll show you that in a sec. So timing for exercisers, 10 minutes before the workout, begin ingestion, and they continue to consume throughout. And then immediately post-workout, same dose. Maximize muscle protein synthesis now. If calories permit, use a pre-workout, way smooth or first string, whichever it may be. Obviously, if you're competitive athletes, probably first string. If you're an older adult like myself, it'd be way smooth. 40 minutes before the workout, and 30 to 40 minutes after the amino boost dose. So that's how you mix the two, that's how it works in a stack. Consume your post-workout whole food meal about one to two hours post-training. So now you've really got it covered. I mean, you ain't missing any signals, trust me, when it comes to this. That's why we get our athletes to last so long. And then repeat the dose. Now for those athletes that are real serious, repeat the dose before bedtime to potentially maximize results. And of course, that's optional. So it just, it just, it just makes sense. All right, dose and timing for non-exercisers. 15 gram dose, so it's one and a quarter scoops taken three times daily between meals. You don't want to take it with meals for the obvious reason we talked about splash stick extraction competing for transporters with one dose before bedtime. So you just take it two other times in between meals, one dose before bedtime. As you age, look at this here. This took a while to figure this one out. Increased dosage to 20% for every decade of life. So I put an example in here. So at age 60, you'd be at 18 grams rather than 15 grams. Safety, nothing to even consider here. I just put it up your arm. Uh, it's considered safe, recommended doses for healthy persons, not pregnant or lactating. It says of oh, lactating. That should be or lactating, of course. Uh, and again, that's, you know, it's because we don't do studies on that group. But you wouldn't want to do that anyway. There's no, no point in it. Uh, added benefits of low calories, reduced nitrogen. And that's why I always kind of argue that there's, a, there's some added benefits if you can't get protein to using this. Contraindications, as with any protein or creatine-containing supplement, Contraindicated for kidney or liver disease, or of course, you know, nerves, which you're not going into uh, because it's got phenylalanine in it. No upper limit for amino acids have been established, so we don't we don't see anything there. No one's dropping dead from taking tons of them. <laughs> Chronic protein ingestion, and we know at two to four times the RDA is safe for healthy individuals, as long as protein's not replacing necessary nutritious foods. Keep that in mind. I always throw that little caveat in. All right, so here's my little sign off to you guys, and I'll show you some programs here in just a second, and that is so. You've heard me say this, you know, sports nutrition is the new healthy aging, but fitness is really what healthcare is rather than disease care. Disease cares. Medicine lives in the world of disease cares. Nutrition is the world of healthcare. So the goal, that is the domain of nutrition, health. And the goal for humans that desire complete physical improvement, so you've got that, I mean, progressive, is and remain or or to simply remain functional and mobile throughout life would be to keep muscle protein synthesis signals as strong as possible thus favoring muscle protein balance, okay? Making this product a valuable adult sport and primary prevention health practice. The practice would offer added benefits as described to all sport lifestyle programs with the added benefit of low calories, reduced nitrogen, and no to minimal sulfur producing. So that as people get older, this is something they would be using for sure. 
can be considered a valuable adult sport and primary prevention healthcare. And again, always like to end on that. Sports nutrition is a new healthy aging. Stay lean and play long. All right, so let's look at what it looks into a program. I know that's the first question I get when I'm on belly to belly with all you guys in your clubs. Okay, so how do you? How, does it, how would it work with this? So here, so here's a merger of health span. So this would be for all of your clients or family that that they're trying to maintain their weight and a good healthy weight that is, or even lose weight at first and then maintain it. So this will be a perfect long-term health. This is sort of the marriage of health span and play span. All right. You take your multivitamin, I don't have to tell you that. Your lean MR, now this would be perfect for weight loss, obviously, or whatever favorite drink. You know, as we know, the pre-post will work just as well as a meal replacement for two of the four meals you eat daily. Amino boost would be your sole pre-post. You don't need this. So this is for a regular person. You only need to, you, you don't need to take your, because you wouldn't want to use lean MR for a pre-post. It's high in fiber. You don't want that. You want fast gastric emptying. So our athletes use first string or whey, right, or pre-post, uh, the pre-post meal replacement. But lean MR is part of a diet. So it go, it's integrated as one of your four, four or five daily meals. Amino boost would be your strictly your pre-post workout only. Now you've got this low calorie, you know, you know, low nitrogen load, but high anabolic formula. So this is perfect for that person wanting to manage weight. And then, of course, as you know, as needed, calcium and the super omega. And boom, you've got the perfect thing. This would probably be 80% of the people in the world today that are uh, overfed or live in developed nations anyway. All right, me, here's my old exercise. Everybody always asks, well, what do you do? All right, so here it is. So for me, I'm obviously on that, on the other side. So I've got to look at life a little differently than you do. How do I use it? And how do I recommend it for older people trying to maintain a healthy weight? Four o'clock in the morning, of course, that's me. I get up and I know you guys know this, coffee. And I mean lots of coffee. That's really important in my life. All right, in fact, we don't even hire you if you don't drink coffee here. Um, and at 4, I, I, at 4.45, I start drinking. I go down to the gym. I have a, uh, we have a couple gyms at our, our house there. And I walk down to the one uh, that's attached down by the tennis course and so forth. And it takes me a little while. So I'll drink it on the way down, work out for like 30 minutes of resistance training, go for a walk for 30 minutes. And during that time, I'm drinking one and a half scoops. All right, so that's pre-enduring. And then immediately, I get back to the house. I do one more scoop. And I'm done right there. And that's equal to about 40 grams of protein for me in muscle protein synthesis activity. Now, at 8 o'clock, right, so I've got an hour goes by, I have first string, and I know I said I should be having whey, but I can't. I'm so addicted to first string, it's ridiculous, because I make athletes drink, and that's all we really have because of our, the athletes that come into our house. I mean, now, now that my son plays for the Rams, we got all kinds of LA Rams here all the time, so first string, i got to have it there. So I use it. And I make my mocha, and you guys have seen this, this uh, recipe before. But it's about 400 calories, but it's 25 grams of protein, two big scoops of uh, first string go in there, and I have that. Then I really have my first large food meal. My first food meal really starts about 10 o'clock. It's about 800 calories. I like, I like a good so solid meal of 40 grams of protein, whether it can be from any kind, any kind of meats or anything. And then, of course, this is when I take my first, I, my active, my joint flex, antioxidant, probiotic, and brain health. You guys don't need some of that stuff, but, you know, when you get old, you've got to have some of that stuff. So... Uh, this is the first. I like to take all of those supplements on top of my food, so it moves through the system slower. The food acts almost like a delivery system as these things break down and kind of keep my the blood saturated with these things. Then at three o'clock, here's where I here's where I cheat. If I'm very active, I'll eat another 300 calorie meal. So it's just about like a half the meal I ate at 10 o'clock. Uh, but if I'm which I'm not very often active when I'm here in the office, I just walk over to Chad's office and I make an amino boost. Chad's sitting right here right now, so he's always got the flavors out for me. I make one and a half scoops. That's equal to about 30 grams of protein. So I'll just have that, and now I'm good to go until dinner, and dinner is around 7.30, and I'll have, as you can see, 1 to 1,200 calories of dinner, which is 50 grams, and that includes scotch. That's why the 1,200 is up there. Otherwise, it's only about 900, but that scotch jacks it up bad. There's no protein in scotch. I keep looking for it. I figure maybe there's something in there. But it's about 50 grams of protein totally. So then I take then I take my remaining dose of my active multi joint flex and brain health. I like to split them up during the day, keep those tissues saturated. And, I, and the reason I wait till the end to do fish oil, I know someone was going, "Where's this fish oil?" Because I eat fish a lot. So if I'm going to have fish that day, there's no reason to take a fish oil. And don't see any calcium because I drink milk. That's kind of figured into these calories here. And I have the first string, which is loaded with calcium as well. So I don't need that. So those are the two. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like for an old guy. Here's what it looks like for a pro athlete. So 
not just my son, but I've got a bunch of, you know, obviously a bunch of NFL. We've got probably 200 different players on this exact stack here. Uh, this is the off season. We reduce it as they go into the season. Brings our weight down just a little bit, but they keep the muscle gains that they had during the stack. Uh, so I just kind of showed you how it all works. And I, the only reason I put this in here because you can't even read it. I put it in here because it looks cool. But that's what I send off to all of them. All right, and then this is just cut out from the from the PDSRG. Everything I just said in the last 40 minutes is right there. Everything done. So you can just go. You can cheat and go to that last slide, and you're finished. All right, and you guys know my end game. Find people like you. Because we don't exist without you that have the passion and give you guys the tools to make everyone you touch better along. And that's to extend not just life, but play span, health, all those things. And we're saving the world with fitness, you know that. And we're delivering the truth and fitness for the next generation to give them a much better chance than I had, even a much better chance than you had. They have all the right tools now. They're going to get they're going to do a whole lot better structurally, last longer into life, feel better about all. It's not just about your family. Remember that it's all family. Okay, I am completed, so now it's time for questions and answers. Chad? Cap? So I was right, everyone, right? A lot of cool stuff, latest science on amino acids, a lot to digest. Just wanted to remind you to um, download the handout, which is in the handout section of the webinar window. You just have to open it up, maximize it, and then go ahead and download that PDF for your references. And at this time, we're going to take some questions for Neil. Um, all you have to do to ask a question is open up the questions little little arrow, and you can type it in, and we will go ahead and field those for you. So let me see. First question comes from Elizabeth Perry. Hey, Elizabeth. She wants to know, how does this product work in conjunction with creatine? Yeah, there wouldn't be any change at all. You take your creatine, uh, like we always say, and we did, we did the last uh, seminar with that, uh, you take your creatine before the workout also and after the workout on exercise days, right? And then, of course, that's once you get past the stacking. In other words, you've already done your five-day loading phase with creatine. Now you're on just the, the, the maintenance dose before and after exercise or 10 grams on non-exercise days split throughout the day with meals. And you still take this exactly the way it's, it's explained to. So you would use this, again, before the workout, as, you, as I explained it. You have your pre-post shake 30 minutes before, 40 minutes before, Take your amino boost and drink it during the workout. And by the way, I know people that mix their creatine with their amino boost during the workout, so you can do that as well. Okay, so that change. answers your question, Elizabeth. If not, go ahead and type another follow-up in. We'll answer that. So Scott Ricker, hey Scott, he wants to know, should it be taken on off days? Okay, look, uh, good question though. Um, depending, it really does depend. If you are... You know, if you're not working out and you're missing a meal somewhere or you're not getting your protein, no reason you wouldn't have it with you to do to, to take it on an off day. Otherwise, right before you go to bed would be another time to take it on an off day. Otherwise, you don't need it on an off day if you're an athlete and you're getting it before and after your workout and you're getting all your protein requirements into the day and you're eating protein every four hours. I would argue you don't need it other than the dose before you go to bed. Okay. Next question um, is... For, for weight loss clients, they have trouble um, consuming enough protein throughout the day. Is it okay to count the amino boost as part of their total grams of protein? Absolutely, and I gave you that number towards the end. And that number is about uh, one of those, I would say one scoop. To be safe, you can count at 30 grams of protein. Maybe, maybe 25 grams of protein to be safe. So absolutely count it. Now don't Count it as your sole protein. That's not right like anything. That's like saying you take your multivitamin and you don't have to eat because it's got all the vitamins and minerals you need. That's that's a horrific off offense. Okay? You need your protein. I'm not saying she needs to. just definitely doesn't. If you notice, hopefully you noticed on mine, the old guy program, I counted my amino boost into my protein, and that comes out to about 180 grams at the end of the day with the amino boost. Without it, I'm down to about 120. So I have the exact same problem, by the way, that uh, your client has. So you're, 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 you're very, very right in ask, ask, asking that question, and yes, count it as protein. One scoop would be 20 to 25 grams, just to be safe. Okay. So for, a, for this comes, this question comes from Michael. He wants to know, Michael, um, Michael uh, he didn't put his last name. Okay. So he wants to know, um, obviously I don't work with a lot of athletes. Most of my clients are middle-aged women. 
how will this help them? Will it help them with soreness, muscle soreness? Oh, okay. That, okay. Well, now, yes, I would argue it would. I, but as you remember, when I did that slide, that asterisk said the majority of your clients that are getting meeting their protein requirements, and certainly if they're doing their pre-post shake, right? They don't need it. I, I would argue they don't need it until they get older. I mean, much older, like even older than me. I mean, I know not too many people are older than me. I'm at 65. So if you're the other side of it, though, I would think that it would be more important to start using it regularly. So for if your client is just you know up there just maintaining, she main, she's she's getting all the protein she needs throughout the day, a gram per lean pound of body mass, which is important, which will help in their soreness as well, and taking her pre and getting part of it pre, before and after a workout. I'd argue she doesn't need it. But the answer to the question, if she is doing all that and she's still sore, I would say yes. I would drink one during the workout. Okay. Um, okay. Anna wants to know, uh, how does this compare to recover and build? Okay. Uh, and, and, and as we started this off, I always like to say it's, it is uh, branch chain. What recover and build is branch chain for all of you that are wondering what that is. Um, it is branch chain on steroids, if you will. Which we used branch chain for this before we, the amino boost formula came out. So if you look, obviously the branch chain are in the amino boost in even a higher level, with leucine being in one scoop four grams. And I have most people taking two throughout. That's eight grams. So to, for branch chain, that would be a lot of branch chain. Now the only reason to take branch chain for is is to re, reduce fatigue through another mechanism. So you would never really need to take them on top of each other. When you look at our new branch chain formula that's actually coming out next year, it's going to have a completely different dosage and structure of, of uh, branch chain because it's going to be more for that, than that athlete or the client that's looking for reduction in fatigue through a different mechanism. So that's, re that's really how that works. So I would never put anybody on branch chain and amino boost. That wouldn't happen unless I was you mean recover and build. an athlete. You mean you wouldn't combine recovery and build with them? No, no. Okay, branch gotcha. chain would be a poor man's amino boost, if you will. Yeah. And that, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a poor man's amino boost because you're going to get enough in the branch chain to do some, to, to really help with muscle breakdown in the beginning. But amino boost is just a little bit more. Gotcha. Okay, any more questions, you guys? I want to ask Neil while we're at it here. Anything for yourself? Anything for a client in particular? You guys all have my email. Uh, yep. so Tom wants to know, what about flavors? Are we expanding flavors? Yeah, so right now we have watermelon, we have grape, and we have lemonade. I'm looking over here at Chad. And we have, yeah, in two or three weeks still, okay, we'll have blue ras. Blue we'll have raspberry? Yeah. Aminos? Yeah, when we discontinued blue ras, it was because the manufacturer that made it wasn't going to get NSF certified. And we couldn't mm. get them to get NSF certified, so we had to stop making it. Well, I got death threats, as you know. <laughs> People are threatening my life. They were, if you don't bring Blue Raz back, we're sending someone after you. There's a contract out on you, Spruce. Bring it back. So I've had Chad working on this for the last two years. Yeah. To bring yeah. it back. We got it back. And it's really good. So, yeah, that's a new flavor coming out. Okay. When, when did you say, Neil? We, two to three weeks. Right. Okay. Two to three weeks available, guys. Blue yep. Raz Amino Boost. Anyone else have any questions out there? Clients, sure. athletes. Yeah. Okay, so as you guys know, we have uh, the document that he always refers to, the PDSRG, Practitioner Supplement, or Dietary Supplement Reference Guide, um, in the Learn section of our website. All the science, all the studies that he went through, mechanisms of action, they're all there. So sometimes it's a lot to digest, so we always suggest break it down, but pick a time every day to study and really become um, an expert in, in, your, in your products. So Casey Mitzel says, awesome. Thank you, Neil and Kat. You're welcome, Casey. We're glad you're able to join us. Good to hear from you, buddy. Yeah, and for everyone else, if, you're, um, if your colleagues missed it and would like to view this webinar, look for it up on our YouTube channel, dot the channel with our tutorials and all our webinars. And then if you haven't done so already on Facebook, please join our Dot Fit Champions page. It's just a select group. We like to sort of, you know, have a meeting of the minds on a regular basis. Neil's always posting the latest research. You know, he's the mad scientist. If you look behind him, he's got all those articles spread out in his big, gigantic whiteboard ever. So thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate you guys being here and hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next. We'll see you with the next one.
Yep. Throwing the clubs. 